Today, we're talking more about setting up projects and specifically about make files that involve multiple subdirectories. Hey everybody, welcome back. I recently did a video where we talked about some different tips for setting up programming projects and based on the conversation, the responses, the comments, I think there's more to say about it. If you missed that video, you might wanna check it out. We talked about version control and we talked about build systems. Today, I wanna to talk a bit more about the build system side of things and specifically how you can use subdirectories to better organize your code and keep things a little more sane as your projects become more complicated. And this isn't something that you see all the time on my projects because a lot of the projects projects that I'm showing you on this channel are super simple and I'm trying to focus on the C code or the, the code technique that we're using and I'm trying not to distract from that by introducing a lot of build system stuff into the project. So I typically keep my projects flat without a bunch of subdirectories, but in real projects, really any project that has any decent amount of complexity to it, adding some structure to your project directory can help you maintain sanity. So today I wanna to show you a simple example that I hope will help you keep your projects better organized and avoid confusion. And of course, if it's helpful, consider supporting the channel through Patreon, where you can also get access to all the source code for this video and others. Now let's get into it. Now I'm gonna start off with the basic code we used in the last project setup video. I've stubbed out an allocator here, basically a malloc function and a free function that currently don't do anything. And at some point I'll make a video about allocators and we'll fill in these functions with some code, but it's fine for now because our focus today is not on finishing a project, but on how we set up the project. And then of course we have a main file down here that is going to be testing out our allocator functions. And previously I talked about how you should always set up your build system at the start. So back then in that video, I created a simple make file that compiled my C files to .0 files and then linked them together into a main binary. You can see that here. And of course I'm using make, you could use any other build system that you prefer, rake, ant, maven, it doesn't really matter. But today I wanna to improve on this build system and project structure by making better use of subdirectories. So let's see what we can do with it. The first First change I want to make, and this is just a common thing you'll see in a lot of different projects, is to make a source directory. And I'm going to copy, well basically I'm going to move all of my .c files into my source directory. Okay, now why am I doing this? The point is that as projects grow, you're getting a lot of files and a lot of different kinds of files and mixing them all together in a single directory is going to get messy. It's going to make it harder to find what you're looking for and you're going to make more silly mistakes that are going to waste your time. And this is something you definitely don't want. So this source directory is going to be just for my source files. Nothing else is gonna go in here. But of course, we're still going to have those files, so we need to make a place for them. So let's also make an OBJ directory. This is gonna be for my .o files. And let's make a bin directory for my compiled binary. So this is just gonna provide a little more organization. But now how are we gonna handle this in our make file? Well, the first thing we're gonna to need to do is change our pattern rule here that produces our .o files from our .c files. So let's update it to take into account our new directory structure. Specifically, what we're going to say is obj and source before each of these. So now what we're looking for is if you can find a matching .c file in src or in the source directory, then you can build it into a .o file in the obj's directory. And of course, for this to work up here, we also need to add obj to each of our .o files, and we need to add bin to the beginning of main. Okay, so we're just basically telling it where to put stuff. And now that we're putting stuff in subdirectories, let's also come down and update our clean target. And this actually gets a little simpler because really all we can do here is just really say, delete everything from these directories. We don't even actually have to worry about their extension. We know that everything in here is just gonna get blown away. This is all temporary stuff. So this is actually a little simpler. And now if we come down, let's just try it out. Oh, I also need to add bin to main here. So we try it out and okay, so this works. We basically are able, let me remove that uh, here. One last problem here. Let's use an automatic variable to make sure that we are generating the right name for our binary. Let's try it out, make clean removes everything, make builds everything. You can see that we have our main in here. We have our .o files in obj just in case we need them for anything. So this works and it provides a bit more organization to our project, but a lot of you may have noticed this makes our make file a little messy and a little hard to maintain because there's a lot of hard coded file paths in here. So what I wanna do is I wanna refactor it just a bit. The first thing I wanna do is to replace some of these things with variables. So like here, 
here, let's just change this to bin because we have a variable that represents this binary, the path to our executable binary. And so that makes things a little more flexible if I ever wanted to change the name of that binary. And it's also a bit tedious that I have to add these directories to every single one of my .o files. So instead, let's change this up just a little bit. I'm going to add first an SRC directory variable. It's going to keep track of the name of our source directory. And we can go down here and replace that where it shows up, it's just the one place. Um, we also can make a matching variable for our obj directory. And we could go through and just like do variable substitution on each of these, but I've got a better way. Basically what I'm gonna do is I want to use the wildcard function like this. And basically what we're gonna do is we're going to look for anything in our src directory that ends in .c. Okay, so this is basically calling a function which is going to say, hey, go out and grab all the files that look like this that are in src. So now any .c file that I stick into my source directory is going to show up in this variable. And so now I can actually make a new obj's directory and we're going to use the pat subst function. This is short, if I can type it for pattern substitution. And then what we're gonna do here is we're just going to give it a pattern. We're gonna say, if you see anything in a variable that looks like this, you know, something src, and then some pattern dot C, then I wanna replace it with obj, or pattern symbol dot O. And then the thing that I actually want to do this replacement on is the sources variable. So what this is gonna do, it seems a little backward, but it's gonna take this sources variable. And if it sees this pattern, it's going to replace it with this pattern. So really all of these dot C files that we had in our source directory are going to, we're gonna produce a matching list of .o files in the obj directory. So now we can basically get rid of this entirely. And this may not be quite as simple to read. We're involving functions and more variables and patterns and things like that, but it is more flexible because it means now I could drop in a dozen more .c files into source and it wouldn't matter. This make file would still be able to compile them and I wouldn't have to add anything to these variables. Okay, so let's go down here and just finish refactoring really quick. So let's add our obj rule here, use our variable instead of just typing it in. Keep in mind at this point, I could change what I call my source directory and my obj directory and we'll be just fine. The make file will still work. And let's come down here and let's update our clean rule to use our variables. Uh, I would actually, let, let's, and so we'll just come up here and add a binder variable bin. And this just, this just again gives us just a little more flexibility. In case we ever wanted to change what our binary directory looked like, we could do it here. And now it still works, okay? Our makefile is still working, still functional. And so this gives us a better organized version of our original makefile. And this structure is going to be able to grow much better as my project gets more complicated. Now I do wanna add one more thing in here that often comes in handy. We've talked occasionally on this channel about release builds and debug builds. Sometimes we wanna include debug symbols and asserts and other things that make your program a little slower, but make it much easier to debug. And sometimes you want to produce a lean, mean, shippable binary that doesn't have any any of that nonsense included because maybe you don't want your end user debugging your binaries anyway. So one more thing we can add to our make file is the ability to produce either debug or release builds depending on the type of binary that we want to produce at the moment. Okay, now there are a lot of different ways we could do this. Time is short today, so I'm gonna go the simple route and maybe we'll build on this in a later video. Let me know if you're interested in that. But one simple way we can do this is to just add a new release target here and basically say, okay, so if I type make release, then it's I'm going to build this binary. So the same binary as before. Now you say, okay, how is this different? Well, we can also say a few other things about it. We can say when you, say make release, I want to change the C flags and we're gonna, let's still use all warnings, but let's add all optimizations. So we're gonna, well, this isn't all optimizations. We'll turn on O2 and let's also define and debug. This will turn off assertions. It's a common option that shows up in release builds, but so let's just say we're using these C flags rather than the C flags that we use up here. And then the one other thing I wanna do is I wanna make sure that I don't get a lot of debug symbols in my .o files that may have been built intermediately. So I'm also going to say, anytime you say make release, I'm also going to do a clean on the whole project. And I do want to emphasize that your C flags for your release build may look very different than mine. This is just a just an example that I'm throwing together so you can see how you can switch between different C flags. But so now we can come down here and we can make, so make just 
it's saying there's nothing to be done because we've already built it. But if I say make release, now it's going to clean everything out. So it runs make clean and it goes through and it builds everything. But with my new C flags, you see those right here. And if we come in here and take a look at our binary, you can see that, okay, it's about 16 K. If I come in here and we make the debug version, you see it's about 17.2 K. So you can see that we are actually building different versions of this binary, which is what we were looking for. So this gives you the opportunity of automating your debug and production builds so that you don't have to do anything special when it's time to actually produce releasable code. Now, there are a lot of other bells and whistles we could add to this project. Let me know down in the comments if there's some that you'd like to see in future videos or something you'd like to recommend to other viewers of the channel. Like this video if it was helpful. Subscribe if you don't want to actually do whatever you want. But I hope you'll subscribe so you don't miss out on my next video, which will be coming out next week. And so until then, I'll see you later.